Welcome to Movement Snacks, bite-sized morsels of nourishing movement. Today, we're gonna to use the wall for a short practice that will give you a boundary that will empower you to make some space in your body. Start with your feet hips with distance apart, and the way to do that and improve proprioception is by turning one foot in so that your big toe just barely touches the heel of the other foot. Avoid the temptation to look down, keep your eyes ahead, head above water, and hold a high vision, pivot that foot out, and then bring the other foot in so that you just barely touch the heel of that foot. And there, not only do you have a new dance move for the weekend, but you know what your hips with distance are. Inhale, open up your arms. Exhale, give yourself a hug right on your left. And then keeping your hips stable and square, round forward just in the spine. So this is going to be a controlled articular rotation of the thoracic spine. Pause here, that's corner one. Take your right shoulder to your right hip. Pause there, start to turn to the right, but come up to center, aligning your crown over your base so that your hips are still square and you're isolating the twist. And then go up to the center without overlifting your elbows and chin. So pull your lower ribs down, but glide your chin back. So you feel an arch in your upper back. And then turn left, and as you turn left, push the floor forward with your left foot and pull it back with your right foot. So that again, you're right in the center of the twist like a DNA double helix. Take your left shoulder to your left hip, feel that nice lateral flexion stretch at the side of your back, and then again round forward, right shoulder to right hip a little more fluidly this time. Stand tall in the center and pull your left ribs down as you press your elbows together to twist more to the right. Come up towards the ceiling, tailbone down, low ribs down, so we're isolating the upper back. Turn to the left, left shoulder to left hip, round forward, good, inhale, open your arms. Exhale, left under right. So you probably already feel a little bit better just from mobilizing your spine a little bit. Round forward without your hips going back. So that's how we isolate the rounding of the spine. And then left shoulder to left hip. Turn to the left, but pull your left hip forward by using your feet like rudders to steer your hull. Nice, up to the ceiling. You can think of your upper body as your sails. Turn to the right, right shoulder to right hip round forward, and then one more rotation, left shoulder to left hip, turn to the left, but square yourself, chin goes back so you can feel activation across your upper back, turn to the right, right shoulder to right hip, round forward, good, open your arms again, interlace your fingers under your chin, now inhale, lift your chest and your chin, exhale, grip the floor with your toes, start to stick your butt out and move your knees forward so you fold from the hips, and keep the arch in your back. Even search a little bit for that feeling of upper back arch you had in the previous drill. And then lean more forward, hips up, eyes forward. Lift your hips, keep contact between your body and your legs because good contact is a conversation that you have with yourself throughout your practice. Inhale and peel your body off your legs, leading with your potential the front of your body. Exhale, bend your knees, go right back down, but fight the monkey on your back until he slides off. In other words, come forward with your front body so you can hinge from your hips. And even as you lift your hips, think that your knees move forward so you fold in the center of yourself. Inhale, come on back up again. Open up your arms, and this time interlace your hands behind your back. So you make a third hand, an implicit hand. Explicit is left and right, implicit is center. It's the part of you that's crucial, but that nobody can really see from the outside. Fold onto your legs, reach your elbows outwards, lean forward, lift your hips up, and back bend over your hands. Inhale, come on back up, leading again with your front, and then bend your knees. And the front of you is still imaged as the future, as your potential, so come out towards the future, and then lift your hips and fold forward. Inhale, come back up one more time. Nice, release your hands. Now, place your left hand on the wall and step close enough to the wall that you can put your right foot on the wall with a little bend in your left knee. Find a position, this hand is for balance, that allows you to get a tuck in your tailbone so you start to feel a stretch and opening in the front of this hip and you should immediately feel activation in your right butt muscles. But the key is really to get that strong tuck so your lower back is straight. Now, with each exhale, you're gonna push into the wall with your heel and drive your tailbone forward. And if you want to intensify it, you can bend deeper and tuck more. So let's take three breaths here to find the position. I'm a little bit pulling with this hand to keep this shoulder down, but I'm not really worried about balance. This hand is really to help me find hip extension on this side. You should feel a lot of ramping up in your hip. And then bring your right arm up. Nice, this hand can drop down 
wrap your right shoulder, which means roll your tricep towards your face, lift your chin, and as you exhale and pull your tailbone down, pull your low belly in and your front ribs down, and side bend. And what this will do is by combining hip extension, your hips coming forward, you get that structure and stability and strength underneath you, the trinity of the first floor, and then you can really lean into your fluency, your flexibility in the top floor. So feel for a really nice stretch up the right side of your lower back, straighten this top arm, lift your chin a little bit. You can now take your hand on your head and lean back luxuriously into the stretch and pull your front ribs down but glide your chin back. Keep your legs alive and lean over to the left. Inhale to come up. Step your feet side by side again. Now right hand comes onto the wall. Bend your um, right knee just a little bit. This foot doesn't have to be too high. Just about a 90 degree angle is good. And then pull with your right hand, bend your left knee, and take a few breaths just to find the position of the pelvis. So it's, um, what you can do also is touch your lower back. And if you feel that the lower back muscles are really like sharply engaged, then you need to regress the angle a little bit, maybe bring your knee lower so that um, you can find this tucked position where you feel your butt engage and the front of your hip stretch without the feeling of low back um, tightening. So pull on the wall with your hand, tuck your tailbone and drive into the wall with your heel, posture up, so head always above water because when your first floor comes forward, then you can lift your vision. So the um, bottom of the boat, right, the sails, and then the bird's nest. And then you can sweep your left arm up, but the key here really is to stay in your legs. Wrap your left shoulder so your armpit is hollow, and then lift your chin so that your armpit comes towards your chin instead of your chin tucking down into your armpit. So just think that you're out at sea and you're looking all the way to the horizon. And then very slightly move your knees towards each other and press in the wall with your left heel, pull your belly in, reach through your top arm. You should feel nice at the side of your back. Keep the scapula of your right arm active, hand behind your head to support. And then with each exhale, Tuck your tailbone with each inhale, telescope your ribs out of your waist, you can see my ribs move, and on the exhale, pull your ribs down, press into the wall with your foot, nice, good, and then just step down, feet apart again, hips width, and fold forward from the waist. Crawl yourself out until you've got the balls of your feet on the floor and your heels on the wall in a downward facing dog, and step your right foot all the way to your right hand. Place your back knee on the floor with the ball of your foot still touching the floor and the heel of your foot touching the wall. And then just come up, pushing the floor apart, and bring your arms up into a V. And you should have a little more awareness of that left side hip, the, the butt of that leg working to extend your hips. So as you drive your heel into the wall, drive your tailbone forward so you feel a nice stretch up the front of your hip. And then we're gonna side bend this one too. So put your right hand on your lower back and just lean over to the right but think of it like as an up and over, so that you really make space for that low back to work. And you could probably feel also your hand on your hip and notice when your butt sort of gives up. And keep pressing into the wall. Same thing here, hand behind your head, lift up through the elbow, and then pull your, right, uh, your left lower ribs down so that there's more stretch. Think of it as an arcing reach to lengthen your back. Nice, you can just come down, keep your hand behind your head, step back a little bit, stand up, lift your chest, arch your back. Now you're kind of allowed to back bend into the basket of your hands. And then keep that back bend as you bend your knees. So press your head into your hands, press the ball into the mitt, pause here, lean forward, reach your elbows forward, and then lift your hips up. And as you lift your hips up, keep reaching your elbows forward so that you really get over yourself in the forward bend instead of just pushing your knees back. And then inhale, trace a nice wide arc to come up. Nice. This time, arms up, interlace your fingers, and bend to the right. So press through your palms and tuck your tailbone so you get that nice stretch up the side of your back. Inhale to come up, arms by your sides, Fold forward again, crawl yourself out into a downward facing dog with your heels on the wall. So heels on the wall, balls of your feet on the floor, and this high heel will help you lift your hips, find a little more space for your hips, 
look forward, step your left foot all the way to your left hand, and then bend your back knee down, keeping your back heel plugged into the wall. Bring yourself up, try not to come out of the lunge. So we're using this 90 degree angle as a measure that balances the strength and flexibility of the, of the position. Use your left hand to help you tuck your tailbone, and then sweep your right arm up and come into side bend and lunge. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth where you would say love or light. So the beauty of the pose is really, the beauty of the sort of duration of the postures is that once you, you set up conditions, you do all the doing, you do all the work, then you get to be in the being. And that's when you lift your perineum to connect your first floor and your second floor. You lift your tongue on the roof of your palate to connect your second floor and your third floor. And that's how you become a well-integrated whole. And take your hand behind your head, drive your heel into the wall, and reach your right elbow a little bit forward and then up and over and it'll feel nice at the side of your back. Good, tuck your tailbone, reach your right elbow up, reach your right elbow over, nice. Both hands behind your head, stand, step your feet back together, inhale to lift your chest, good, so a little arch back into the web of your hands, and then bend your knees just like we did before, pause here, elbows and heart forward, exhale, hips up, over yourself, inhale, come on back up. Nice, and then interlace your fingers, strong tuck in your tailbone and bend to the left. Try to keep your arms straight and feel for the line of energy from the balls of your feet to the index knuckles of your hands. So the index knuckles of your hands and the balls of your feet represent your lungs because they're buoyant and robust. So by pressing down with the balls of your feet, you can lift your lungs by reaching through your index fingers you open your sails and um, really allow good uh, breath to come in. Inhale to come up, bring your arms down by your sides. Good, and then hands at your hips, fold forward again. Crawl yourself back into downward facing dog with your heels on the wall. Push the floor down with the balls of your feet. Press your heels into the wall to stick your butt up a little more and then close your ribs as a counterbalance. Look forward and pull inwards with your hands and that'll place your shoulders nicely. And then just to check your measure, which will be relevant for the next pose, come forward into plank pose, let your heels come off the wall, and then back to downward dog. Look forward, step your right foot all the way in with your right hand, and then take your left foot and put it right up on the wall in line with your hip. From there, take your um, left fingers and crawl them forward in front of you. Take your right hand onto your knee. So I want you to throw your knee into your hand and pull your heart forward to move your right hip back. So really the two legs are like in the same line. And then from there we're gonna take a twist. So look forward, look around the clock, turn your head, and then bring your arm up. And the way to find your balance is to move back through your heel and forward with your knee and you'll feel that, that diagonal cross-reference of the back heel to the front knee will make space in your left lower back. So use your hand, the left hand on the floor, to pull you a little bit towards your leg, and then use your top arm, wrap the shoulders to your palm faces forward, and lean back into the twist. So this is a little bit demanding, but it's worth it. It's demanding in the front hip, press through your heel, nice, and then you can reach up and over with your top arm, if you like. You could even cradle your brain like we did in those other poses and arc into that nice stretch. Good, twist it, reach back through your elbow and then bring your hands down outside your foot and just step back, one, two, into downward facing dog. Look forward, left foot all the way to left hand, right foot now goes up on the wall, press into the wall with your right foot and pull your left hand against your knee with your fingers forward in the center, right in the center of yourself to really pull you forward. Nice, and then from there, turn your head by looking in front of you. Imagine you're looking at a clock face in front of you, that'll really save your neck. Good, and then you can bring your left arm up and drive into the wall with your right heel. So it references that first pose that we did when you were pressing your heel into the wall, standing. So now press your heel into the wall and see how that just lengthens out my lower back. So I'm using my right sitting bone to my right heel to lengthen my low back.
And then pull with your right hand, so you pull yourself into the twist, and think that in this pose that your heart on the left goes up and over in a pop-up to two o'clock, which is the drishti of joy. You can extend the top arm if you don't lose the twist. Nice, you can cradle your brain behind your head to turn your heart, and lean back into the twist. And then hands down, step back into that dog on the wall, and then just walk your hands back towards your feet and bring your feet a little forward until you can put your hips on the wall and you can hang right over your legs, giving yourself a nice hug of the elbows. Lean forward, slide your butt up. And in the magic square, the center of your upper body, your heart center is room five. So five is the middle and the mediator of all of the polarities. So the center of your feet in the magic square is also a five. So I'll magic square the feet and then we'll get into why that's relevant. So for one, bring your weight to your center of your heels. Two, go to the balls of your feet. Three, go over the top of your feet to the center of the outer edge of your foot. And then keep your knees bent. Four, go up to your pinky toe knuckle. And then five, here's the polarity, go to the center of your arches and lift. And then imagine a line from the center of your arches, one to the other, and then take that center of that line right up to your perineum, which is room five when you magic square the pelvis. And then go back down to the center between your feet and go to room six of the feet, which is the inner edge of the heels. Nice, go up to the inside of the arch for seven, and then eight, go over the top of your foot to the outer edge of the heel, the laundry room of the foot, when the body is imaged as a house. And then nine, go up in between big and second toe, and 10, circle up your feet, lift your hips. So you are always in the center of your circumstances. You are the mediator, the meditator, the modulator. So from the center of your arches, draw a line, and then find the center of that line and go up to your perineum, and then find the center of your upper body and bring your heart forward. So that is the uh, middle, and the magician's in the middle, right? Because the magician can manipulate circumstances around him. So the magic square of the whole body is one to your perineum, two to your right eye, three around your back to your left armpit and hand, four up to your left eye, five to your heart center, six to your right sitting bone, seven up to your right arm, eight to your left sitting bone, and then nine to your third eye where you thread the needle. And the third eye of your pelvis is your knees, so move your two knees together, move your third eye forward. Nice. And then from there you can just drop everything, bring your hands down. Nice. Come down onto your knees or any way that you like to sit. Bring your hands onto your thighs so that you make good contact between your upper body and your lower body. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth so you make good contact between your second floor and your third floor. And feel how movement makes you a well-integrated whole. Inhale from underneath yourself, up the back of your body, image fire rising all the way to the top of your head, and then when you get to the top of your head, exhale down the front of yourself and image that water is descending. When you get underneath yourself, inhale again up your body. This is the breath of the moment, the polarity of room one and room nine, the boiler room where you light a fire, and the cupola where you air it out and get vision. Exhale down the front of you, grace, image this rain descends the front of your body. Inhale, fire up your back, use your imagination, and it's spherical over the top of your head, grace descends. So it takes effort to make a fire, but rain is out of your control, it just comes like grace right before you hit your lowest moment. So sometimes you have to make effort to get yourself out of your depths, so make your effort skillful so that your efforts beget grace. Now put the fire in your mind underneath the water in the base of you, like making a campfire in boiling water. And then inhale at the center of yourself all the way to the top of your head. 
and let the steam come out, let the heat out. That's really what practice is about, is letting the heat out, moving shit out, so that you can be in the center of your circumstances, well integrated, well adjusted, and adaptable. Sit quietly for just a few moments, let your belly go. smile in each eye, put a little tiny smile on each armpit, put a little smile on your belly button, Notice how it feels nice to have quiet, silky breathing. And whenever you feel ready, open your eyes and go about the rest of your day nourished from your movement snack. Have a great day.